Hello, uh, my name is Scott Grizzard. Uh, this is Calculus uh, 1, Fall 2020. Uh, today we're going over quiz 11a, the Lipitol's rule question. So, a uh, reminder, there are polls and chat in Blackboard Collaborate Ultra, or you can chat here. If you chat here, it's public. If you chat in Blackboard Collaborate Ultra, it's private to those in the class. Um, the internet says it was good today, so let's see what's going on. Um, all right, so this quiz focused on L'Hopital's rule, um, and there were a couple ways to do some of these. Now, this first one, bear in mind this is Arctan, um, and I've said this before, I hate this notation, but, you know, given that I'm not writing the test this year, it seemed wise to me to, uh, to use the notation, to use multiple different forms of notation, because I don't know what's going to be on the test, so... I'm using that notation even though I hate it. Um, Arctan here. So the way to think about these, at least the way I think about these. Now, whether or not you like to think about these is uh, this way is a different issue. But what I like to do is I like to draw myself a little circle. And I usually just write for myself. This is going to be an angle. So I usually write for myself the thing that it's going to be. So I'm going to write for myself theta equals Arctan of x. So I write that it's theta just to remind me that it's an angle. Y would work too. I just like theta. It reminds me it's an angle. And then I write theta. So I write tan of theta equals x. So now I've got tan of theta equals, this is kind of just, I'm, I'm equaling, right? Equals zero plus. And then I'm going to remind myself that means that sine of theta over cosine of theta equals zero plus. So what I really care about is the sine. So if I take my little unit circle here, where is sine zero? Okay, well, it's there and there, but the happy place for sine is here. So there, this is the happy place for four, sine of zero plus equals zero plus. Cosine is gonna be one, I don't care. Cosine of zero is one, so I don't really care about it. It doesn't make a difference. So one to five, how do we feel about that thought about how to get it at arctan? Um, uh, and again, I get these mixed up a lot. So for me, I don't have them just straight memorized. I have to kind of work through them a little bit. Um, so the, let's see, reasoning behind arctan of zero. One, two, three, I didn't set this up ahead of time for as much as I could. I can set these a little bit up ahead of time, but I can't really do it. Start. So how do we feel about the kind of reasoning behind how to get at arctan? All right, it's just, I, I kind of set it equal to the thing. And people have been asking me, how do you figure these out? That's how you kind of figure them out. I, I just kind of do a little unit circle there. I remember what sign is. I remember that the only thing that really matters here is this. And there are only a couple of points that matter. So there, the options for arctan on these limits are kind of, you know, arctan of zero, and I'm just going to know that equals zero, arctan of infinity equals, so if I've got sine, I, I want cosine to go to zero, right, and I want sine, I don't, I don't actually care what sine goes to, I want cosine to go to zero, um, and that happens here, And I've got kind of arctan of negative infinity. That happens at the bottom. That's negative pi over 2. And then that happens from the left, recall. Am I doing that right? No, I've got these backwards. i got the, the plus. This needs to be the left. That needs to be the right. Um, uh, right, because here I'm coming from the negative direction, but I'm getting more negative. Here, I'm coming from the positive direction, but I'm getting more positive. 
So that's that. Okay. Um, and then the other one that you sometimes see is Arctan of one. And that's, um, that's that angle right there, right? That's the square root of, of that's pi over four. Uh, and Arctan of negative one is negative pi over four. Um, so I, I don't know the, the ones that are typically asked are these, these are kind of the typical ones. Um, well, so you have to get, that's important, right? The derivative is going to be important here. So someone's asking if you just memorize the derivative, you need to show why you can use L'Hopital's rule, because that's what you're going to do here, right? So this here goes to zero plus. And this here is going to go to zero plus, right? Because I'm coming from that direction. So how do you feel about that one to five? That I have to kind of justify what I'm about to do. Uh, let's see, stop, start. So that's how I kind of reason through arctan. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the derivative of both the top and the bottom. So I'm going to put a little h there to signify that I'm about to use L'Hopital's rule. And that's going to give me the limit as x goes to 0 plus of, okay, the derivative of the top. Come here. So I'm going to have d over dx, and you don't need to write this step unless it's really complicated. Um, arctan of x over d over dx of x. And then I'm going to evaluate those two things, and I get um, 1 over 1 plus x squared over one with the limit sign because I don't want to forget that. And that's going to equal here the limit as x goes to zero plus of one over one plus x squared. Okay, now this goes to 1, this goes to 1 plus 0, and 1 over 1 is simply 1. I might write this if I care about it. I don't really. Okay, so how do we feel about that 1 to 5? Oh, pulling. Got to go back. Hold on. Uh, for some reason, that didn't work. There we go. Okay. Um, the stuff in blue is what requ is required. You don't need to do not this stuff. This stuff is, should not be in blue. Let's see if I can fix that. So the idea here is that this is my reasoning type thing. Um, but this is the stuff that's required. Okay. All right. So for this one, there's two ways to get at it. Okay. There's L'Hopital's rule. And then there's the old way. So here's the right sine of x squared. Well, this is going to go to zero. This whole thing goes to zero. This goes to zero, so I'm going to apply L'Hopital's rule, and I get the limit as x goes to zero 
of uh, uh, the derivative of the outside. It's going to have a lovely little chain rule there. So I'm going to get d over d u of sine of u. That's going to be cosine of u times d over dx of the inside over 2x, which is going to equal the limit as x goes to 0 of cosine of x squared times 2x over 2x. 1 to 5, how do we feel about that? Uh, let's see, stop. Okay. Now, I could do L'Hopital's again if I was seriously, you know, that's zero, that's zero. If I'm seriously masochistic, I can do L'Hopital's rule again, but that's going to have a product rule in it. Why don't I just do some of this job right here? So why don't I just instead go, oh, those two cancel, and I'm left with cosine, the limit as x goes to zero of cosine squared. Uh, which with direct substitution equals one. Okay. Yeah, okay. Or, I could do that. So one to five, how do I feel about the fact that I didn't have to use L'Hopital's rule? Okay. And that's something to keep in mind. Keep it in the back of your head that I don't always have to use L'Hopital's rule. Because sometimes these things, what if this problem had been something like the cosine of x cubed, or I'm sorry, the sine of x cubed over x squared. Uh, maybe that would work. No, that's going to go to zero. How could I make that just not go away? Be nice. I could do e to something. I, I, could, I could do e to the negative infinity. There you go. I, I could make something that was unpleasant up here. And sometimes not doing L'Hopital's rule, you know, it's like, did you ever hear about the, I had a chef friend um, who always told me the following, the difference between wisdom, intelligence, and wisdom, right? Intelligence is knowing that tomato is technically a fruit, okay? Wisdom is not putting it in the fruit salad. So sometimes L'Hopital's rule is doable and a perfectly good way to do it but sometimes it's not the wisest way to do it. Sometimes you just want to go special limit. Okay? So that's kind of his little quip, right? The difference between intelligence and wisdom is knowing that... Intelligence is knowing that a tomato is technically a fruit. Wisdom is not putting it in the fruit salad. Okay. Now, on this one, we've got e to the t. Well, e to the 0 is 1. And this right here goes to 0, but it goes to 0 plus. Oh, I need to put all this in blue, don't I? All right. 
So this uh, equals, I'm going to use the old uh, infinitesimal trick, and I'm going to get 1 over 0 plus, which is infinity. Okay. 1 to 5, how do we feel about that? That one I actually can't use L'Hopital's rule. Why does it keep doing that? It's annoying me. Well, but it's zero plus. Remember, this is the same thing. Remember that I've got two types of things, right? I've got um, one over x to the n n is odd and that looks like this and i've got one over x to the n n is even and that looks like this right so these actually go to the same in both directions right um And this, by the way, is common. On this test, you will probably see one that has to be done with L'Hopital's rule, one that could be done with L'Hopital's rule or something else, and one that you can't use L'Hopital's rule on. This is kind of a typical pattern. Um, and I already posted the quiz. I should probably change the quiz to put more L'Hopital's rule problems on there since you guys are asking for them. Uh, I'll do it next time. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's tricky. The fact that this is zero plus comes from the fact that this is squaring, right? So zero minus, so e to the, so the limit as t goes to zero plus of e to the t over t squared would equal e to the zero plus would equal e to the zero plus over zero plus would equal one over zero plus would equal infinity. And then the limit as t goes to negative, as t goes to zero minus of this thing, e to the t over t squared equals e to the zero minus, which is going to just be e to the zero over zero minus squared which equals one over zero plus, which equals positive infinity. Okay. Um, yeah, so, I mean, either one of these kind of ideas work. Okay, the graph of the derivative first. Make sure you're looking, remember that you're looking at the derivative. Right? So what are the critical numbers here? Well, zero and three. Right. Okay. Um, yeah, so it's not actually D and E, right? x equals 0 or x equals 3 because that is where f prime of x equals 0 or where f prime of x does not exist. In this case, both of them exist. Um, I just, because that's the definition of a critical number, right? I just wrote the definition of a critical number. 
because that just, you know, what if there was one where it didn't exist and I missed it? Well, but I wrote or where it doesn't exist. So, you know, I kind of get the extra little explanation point, even though I missed the point. Um, I just wrote the definition. On what intervals is F increasing? And I say where... Where F prime of X is above the axis or where f prime of x is greater than or equal to zero or blah 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 that gives me the intervals uh, uh, negative two zero and uh, three uh, four uh, where f prime of x uh, goes from positive to negative, All right? Uh, so I've got one way to do this here. Um, this is also a good justification for just about everything. Uh, so you've got F is increasing a minimum. So I want... Oops, I messed it up. I want a minimum, right? So I want to go down and then come up. That means I went minus plus, where F go, where F prime of X goes from negative to positive. Um, so that would be at X equals zero. I'm sorry, X equals three. Okay, so how do we feel here about um, part A? So this is number three, part A. I didn't ask. So one to five, number three, part A, the critical numbers. Ah, uh, no, it should not be two. Because remember, I'm looking, I'm talking about F, but looking at F prime. Okay? I'm talking about F, but looking at F prime. So this is not a critical number for F. It is a critical number for F prime, but not for F. Okay, and then for part B, where F prime is above the x-axis, or F prime is positive, um, okay, I'll get into that in a minute. Okay, so this is part B. So for part B, how do we feel one to five? So I want the intervals where F is increasing. So remember the thing you need to think about is this, right? F, F prime, F double prime. Right? When F a prime is, oh, and I need to do the other one. So let's not do the double prime yet. So this is what you need to be thinking about. When F prime is positive, F is increasing. When F prime is negative, F is decreasing. And then for the other one, I need this one. I need this picture here. F, I'm, like, I'm gonna run out of room. Uh, let's do this picture. Let's move this over to the left. This is one thing that you can do on these tablets that you absolutely cannot do on a board, and I love it. 
we need smart boards in the in the classrooms because we've got one on the third floor and it is just it lets you do things like this but still have that kind of board thing going okay so when f prime f is concave up when f prime is increasing when f double prime is positive f is concave down when f prime is decreasing when f double prime is negative so those are kind of the pictures i want to remember now this local minimum remember i'm looking at f so f is going to have a local minimum where it goes down and then it comes up okay Um, and I get confused all the time with that, right? I'm always looking at the wrong one. So if I draw this little thing right here, I don't forget. So I want to go from negative to positive at F prime. So this is positive to negative. That's going to be a local max. Here is the min in F, right? I went from my derivative went from negative to positive. That went, my function went from decreasing to increasing. So that's where I have the local min. Okay, so 1 to 5, how do we feel about that one? And remember, this is the min. This is the min in F. I'm looking at F prime and saying things about F. Okay. Where... F prime of X is increasing. So I look at this, I've got F, F prime, F double prime, and here's where I've got them. I've got increasing, concave up, positive, decreasing, concave down, negative for the double prime. Okay, so where's F prime increasing? So the min, that, that, is, that is exactly, uh, the, so the question is, does that min mean anything? Absolutely, right? This min in F prime means I'm going to have an inflection point in F because my concavity is going to change. Absolutely, that means something. It just doesn't mean something, it just doesn't mean anything for the maxes and mins of... Uh, of the, the the thing now i could say that f is concave up right i could also say that f was concave up could also say f prime of x equals zero f double prime of x was positive, um, but I wouldn't, okay? So the second derivative test trick thing, it's not always conclusive, and the, 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 the first derivative test on the min and the max works so much better. I, I would just avoid the second derivative test if you can, um, because the first derivative tests are gonna give you um, uh, uh, nicer type answers, but you can do them. Okay, so where f prime of x is increasing. Well, f prime of f x is increasing from here to here. That means that f is going to be concave up there. Here it's concave down. Uh, let's see. I've got increasing, increasing, decreasing, 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 increasing. This is stuff about f, um, if you so desired. So f is concave up from 2 to 4. Okay. Yeah, so you're looking for your minute where F prime crosses the axis. Right? Not where F crosses the axis, where F prime crosses the axis. Okay, so how do we feel there about part D? And this stuff is hard, right? I didn't, I've been 
pounding on this stuff in problem sets for the entire module because this is kind of the hardest the the, the this thing takes a little while to play with um so it's hard and it's hard to think okay something's going on in f prime what does that talk about f and i can't graph f right it's hard Okay, this last one. For what x values does f have an inflection point? Well, f has an inflection point wherever I have a min or a max, a local min or a local max in f prime. And this is something that the book does not harp on, and I do, because it's much easier to think of inflection points as mins or maxes in f prime. Okay? So wherever and F prime has a local min at X equals two. It's also a global min, but that's fine. Okay. And it's easier to think of it this way. I, I cannot stress this enough. It's, it's much easier to think of the inflection points as places where F prime has a local min or a local max. Okay. Because that also gives you the way to solve them. Oh, you just do the critical values of F prime. All right. So one to five, how do we feel there about part E? So that's the significance of those minimums and maximums in F prime. That's where my inflection points are. Okay. Now, if you want the full justification, well, that's because that's where the concavity changed, right? Because here, F prime changed from increasing, from decreasing to increasing, right? So that's where I have, a, you know, an inflection point or where F prime went from decreasing to increasing or where it went from decreasing to increasing, increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing, right? Well, those are the local mins and local maxes of F prime. Okay. Inflection point is the min or max of F prime. The inflection point is of F. Where at X values does F have an inflection point? That's a place where F changes its concavity. But that's going to happen wherever F prime has a local min or a local max. So it's easiest to think of them that way. Uh, that will make your life, like, super better. Okay, any other questions? Okay.